Middle East, the rise of ISIS, believers being persecuted, a ruthlessly enforced convert or die policy. Today, a news journalist with firsthand accounts of these ISIS atrocities, how ISIS activity will affect you and how it all ties into last day's prophecy on Jewish Voice. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, a program to help you to understand the Jewish roots of your Christian faith, Bible prophecy, and world events surrounding Israel. Well, there is a crisis raging in the Middle East that's desperately calling for our attention and help. ISIS is advancing, and Christians in the Middle East are being persecuted, and if these terrorists are not confronted, we will certainly face more dangerous days ahead. It's time for the church here in the United States to step up and do something about it, to be a voice for those who are being persecuted, to pray for them and to bring about change. Here to report on what he is experiencing in the front lines in northern Iraq is the Jerusalem Bureau Chief for CBN. Please welcome my good friend, Chris Mitchell. Chris, welcome back. Great to be with you, brother. Thank you. You know, I heard that I heard you were going to be available uh -huh. in, in yeah. the area, and I just I said, grab him. Right. But you were right on the front lines, watching what was going on, watching the devastation yeah. of ISIS, the devastation they've they've left in their wake. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a just a, a quick report of your experience? Yeah, we were there just after ISIS took over Mosul, which is the second largest city in Iraq. That's ancient Nineveh. That's where Jonah went more than 2,000 years ago to preach his message of, uh, his reluctant message of repentance to the people that live there. And then we went back after ISIS expanded their outreach and they took over a lot more uh, places like Mount Sinjar in Sinjar where the Yazidis were, but took over a number of Christian areas as well. And when, after I had this experience, really a privilege, Jonathan, to be with some of these people, many of the Christians that were persecuted, some of the Yazidis as well, I really felt responsible to be able to come back and tell their story and tell three things. First of all, who ISIS is and, and what their agenda is. Second, tell people uh, about the persecution of Christians in the Middle East, not only through ISIS, but other places as well. And third, help people prepare for the days ahead. We live in dark, dangerous days, and we I do. want people to, to help get You're ready. You say in your book, Fragile Times. They are and fragile times, I think times. it's absolutely yeah. true. Okay. I want to talk about the, the, these, these three things. Sure. So who is ISIS? How did they get started? And how are they different or a greater threat than Al-Qaeda? Well, they're a greater threat in, in, in part because they have land. They, they control land maybe the size of England right now. Uh, ISIS began as AQI, which is Al-Qaeda. Uh, Iraq, and they began back in the mid 2000s, around 2005, by Zarqawi, who was uh, ev eventually died. Uh, two members of uh, Al Qaeda took over after him, and then a man named Al Baghdadi. After they, those two were killed, he took over. He formed the Islamic State of Iraq. He expanded it to Syria, be called ISIS, Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. And then he established what he's called a caliphate. He calls it the Islamic State. As I said, it controls land about the size of England, and they pose a significant threat uh, to the stability of the whole Middle East and, in fact, the world. Is it hype or are we talking about the most powerful terrorist organization perhaps we've ever seen in history. I think we have. I mean, Al-Qaeda was, was one branch, and they all share much of the same ideology, but they have different tactics. Uh, I think uh, when ISIS took over and they, they blurred the political lines, I mean, there had been a political line between Syria and Iraq for almost 100 years called the Site pico line, and, uh, and they blurred that because they, they actually decimated that particular line because they don't see political boundaries like we do. They see they want to have uh, a really a caliphate, which is a, like this Islamic empire that doesn't have any political boundaries as we know them today. We had the opportunity to go into a refugee camp that was about 15 minutes from ISIS, and we sat down with a former Iraqi soldier who worked in intelligence, and he interrogated many of these ISIS fighters. And he said, he told us that what they told him is that they want to take over parts of uh, the Middle East, Syria, and Iraq. Eventually, they want to take over Europe, and then they have a global agenda. They really want to take over the world, and that's what their goals are. We can't look at them as some regional battle, some regional right. war that doesn't affect America. 
No, it that, affects that, it's exactly. It's a terrible mistake. Exactly. And, and the FBI director said not too long ago that they have active investigations in every, 50, every one of the 50 states in the United States. So they want to infiltrate what's going on here in the West. And really, this is a, and this is a theme in part of the book, uh, we're really having a battle of Western civilization. We're fighting groups like ISIS and Hamas and Al-Qaeda that really have an agenda that they want to confront what we know as Western civilization. I've heard this on some news outlets, others deny, denies it. We have, they've declared war on America. For sure. And, and it, 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 mm -hmm. Do you see it that way? Oh yeah, they, they have declared war on America. War on the West, more on Christendom. Uh, you know, they see democracy as their enemy. And so they have declared war on us. And uh, whether or not we want to recognize it, uh, whether or not we want to uh, realize that, that's what they, they have declared war on us. When I think of the Caliphate, I think of the Ottoman Empire. I think of mm -hmm. Turkey. Exactly. What is Turkey's involvement, if any, with ISIS? What's well, the connection? Well, right now they seem kind of complicit with what ISIS is doing. For example, there's dozens, if not hundreds, of ISIS fighters that have gone through Turkey into northern Iraq and Syria. They're sort of aiding and abetting, even though they're supposedly in the coalition uh, to oppose them. And as you mentioned, the caliphate, the last caliphate began around 1517. It lasted almost a little over 400 years. It was abolished in 1924. Now, People need to understand what a caliphate is. It's sort of like this Islamic empire that's ruled by Sharia law, Islamic law, and that's what they want to establish in the whole world. And so the caliphate that they have declared was, is the first time in almost 100 years. It was abolished in 1924 by then uh, president of Turkey, Ataturk. He wanted to secularize Turkey. Uh, now Turkey seems to want to go the other way and Islamicize that whole yeah, nation. Now, I've, heard, I've heard Prime Minister Netanyahu connect Turkey to ISIS in the same way mm -hmm. that Hamas and Hezbollah have been connected with Iran, particularly it, Hezbollah. Exactly. Uh -huh. So do you see... Some yeah, they're, they're seem exactly the same sort of relationship where they're they're kind of giving aid and comfort to the enemy, and uh, so you know ISIS fighters, those that are called recruits from all over the West, from Europe and even the United States, uh, many times the route that they take to this Islamic State is through Turkey. Don't go anywhere. Chris is going to continue to tell us about what he experienced in northern Iraq, and how we can help those believers who are facing persecution by ISIS. And up next, an important update that you need to see, an impoverished tribe of Jewish people who desperately need your help. Stay with me. Your gracious gift in support of the work of Jewish Voice right now will make you a vital part of providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. Our medical teams will provide more than just physical care and comfort. They will share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their promised Messiah. Today, we urgently need your help to equip and fund this vital upcoming outreach. Time is literally running out for many of the most vulnerable there, especially infants and toddlers. You can help save them, but you must act now. Will you be a blessing to these needy Jewish people? Call or click right now to share life-saving help, and we'll say thank you by sending you the book by Jonathan's guest, Chris Mitchell, which was highlighted on today's broadcast. In Destination Jerusalem, CBN News Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell takes you to the front lines of the conflicts burning through the Middle East today, including the spread of ISIS, the ongoing isolation of Israel, and the struggle for Jerusalem. As you read, you'll learn how to prepare for what lies ahead in what may be the most challenging days of our lives. If God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $100 or more today, to help bless some of the neediest Jewish people on earth, we'll also send you our beautiful and practical Afghan throw. This specially created Afghan carries the spiritual reminder to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It will make a comforting and inspirational addition to your home. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share a gift in support of this vital outreach and request your thank you resources, please call, click, or write now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of extending life-saving medical help to some very needy Jewish people. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. Please call, write, or click right now. Terror in the 
Middle East, the rise of ISIS, believers being persecuted, a ruthlessly enforced convert or die policy. Today, a news journalist with firsthand accounts of these ISIS atrocities, how ISIS activity will affect you and how it all ties into last day's prophecy on Jewish Voice. I'm back with CBN News Bureau Chief in Jerusalem, Chris Mitchell, who's just written a new book. It's called Destination Jerusalem, ISIS, Convert or Die, Christian Persecution and Preparing for the Days Ahead. And you quote Prime Minister Netanyahu as saying, when militant Islam succeeds anywhere, it's emboldened everywhere. That's why Israel's fight is not just our fight, it's your fight. Mm -hmm. That's true. Israel is on the front lines. Israel is sort of the canary in the, in the mine right now against radical Islam. If you've been to Israel many times and to Jerusalem, uh, if you go to the northern border, you'll see Hama uh, Hezbollah that has thousands of rockets aimed at Israel. If you go to their southern border, you'll find Hamas that has maybe uh, 14,000 or more rockets aimed at Israel. If you go to the east, you'll find Iran. So they're on the front lines, but their battle is the same as our what battle. A pressure cooker. Exactly. We as a nation don't seem to believe it when they see you as the big exactly. Satan. We're just a little Satan. Mm -hmm. And this idea that if somehow we stop supporting Israel, all the terrorism will go away. Right. That's just absurd, isn't it? Uh, it? It is. I mean, a lot of people say if they solve the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, then all the Middle East is going to be peaceful. But if you look around and you see, regardless of what happens with the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict or supposedly two-state solution. Hezbollah is dedicated to the eradication of Israel. Hamas in its charter says that they want to uh, eliminate Israel. Just right. give land, mm -hmm. settle this in a two-state solution, but in reality that then becomes a staging ground for the next step, That's right? right yeah. Push Israel into the mm -hmm. sea and ultimately world domination. They've said it so clearly. Yeah. We don't seem to be listening. And we talked to an uh, Iranian expert, his name is Manashi Amir, and we talked to him a while ago about this, and he said what Iran's uh, goal is, they first want to defeat Judaism, and then they want to destroy Christianity. And so they see this as a religious struggle against both Judaism and Christianity. That's why they call Israel the, the little Satan and the United States the great Satan. Yeah. Chris, you know, as a, as a Jewish believer, as a Jew, yeah. I think about things like the Spanish Inquisition or the pogroms when I right. hear things like this. And of course, the Nazis uh, who were committed to world conquest. And mm -hmm. here we are again exactly in the next century mm -hmm. facing a group that wants to dominate us all. And when you look at the horrific pictures of beheadings and, and people being burned alive. How can people that claim to love God do such things? Well, they, they cite the Quran and they, they say that, uh, for example, in uh, Surah 8:12, it says to strike terror into the unbelievers. And, and it's something that they, this is their, their uh, vision uh, of what Islam is. They cite the Quran, they cite the teachings of Muhammad, and they say they're doing this in the name of God. And so it's Christians that, that they see as the enemy, people, ethnic groups like the Yazidis, even Muslims who don't ascribe to their, their brand of Islam, they see as the enemy. The infidel. Exactly. Why so politically correct to say Islam is a religion of peace and love when it's producing that kind of fruit? You know, the Bible says you'll know them by the, you'll know the tree mm -hmm, by its right. fruit. And the fruit is death and destruction and conquest for world domination. I don't see that as very good fruit. No. Why, why, the, why the soft sell? Well, it is political correctness. It's just trying to obfuscate exactly what's obvious to, to most people. Uh, you know, when they're beheading 21 Coptic Christians or burning a Jordanian pilot alive, uh, this is what they see as, as going chapter and verse by the Quran as they understand it. Yeah. What do we need to know, Chris? What do people watching need to know about ISIS that we're either not hearing 
or not paying attention to? Uh, they, they have an agenda that, that is to combat, combat against Western civilization, and they see us as the enemy. And whether we believe in them or not, this is what their final goal is. And so we need to understand uh, what their goals are, and I think that we need to be informed. One thing they, too, they want to do too, Jonathan, is I think they have an agenda of trying to strike terror into us, and they said that is something they, they uh, follow in the Quran. And so when you see a quote unquote lone wolf attack when Sydney, Australia, Ottawa, Canada, London, even more Oklahoma when this woman was tragically beheaded by a fellow worker, uh, these are things that they want to strike terror into us. And, and so we need to guard ourselves, uh, gird our, gird our uh, loins of our mind and guard our hearts against the kind of fear that's coming against us. Daunting question, can ISIS be defeated? I think they can. I think they can be militarily. I think that's one aspect of this battle against, uh, against ISIS. I think right now there's not the political will to go ahead and do what's necessary uh, militarily to go ahead and defeat this group. And uh, it, it probably was much easier when they were, they were going through Mosul and other places, but now it seems a much more complicated uh, scenario. But the great danger is reversing back to 1939, where I think of Neville Chamberlain just taking the position of appeasement That's right. until it was almost too late. Mm -hmm. I, I think if the Nazis hadn't turned on, on Russia, we would <laughs> exactly. have been a different yeah. story. Yeah, and so. I, you know, you mentioned Netanyahu earlier. Uh, Churchill at that time, he was the lone voice in the Western world speaking out against uh, the rise of Nazi Germany. And I think right now, and we can talk about Iran, but Netanyahu is the one that's speaking out not only against ISIS, but Iran and, and the look dangers. at all the opposition. But I want to go back first and talk about Iran. Sure. Because ISIS is one great threat, but then you have Iran and Bibi Netanyahu, Prime mm -hmm. Minister Netanyahu, says the single greatest threat here is Iran developing a nuclear weapon, mm -hmm. and we don't seem to be doing much about it to stop that. No, it seems like the negotiations that have been going on, we talk about in the book about uh, in, 19, in, in uh, 2013, we went up to Moscow with Pre uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu to meet with President uh, Putin at the time. And uh, he was trying to convince Putin to vote against what was then in 2013, this intimate, intimate agreement in Geneva. And uh, he failed to uh, convince Putin not to sign on. But what they did in 2013, and now they're doing again, in Lausanne is they're allowing Iran to continue its enrichment of uranium. Where do you see this headed? There was a quote by Churchill who said that, you know, you were given the choice between dishonor and war, you chose dishonor, you'll have war. I think it makes war more likely, not less, in the Middle East because I think if Iran is emboldened and it has this ability to enrich uranium and, uh, and develop a nuclear weapon, then what's going to happen in the Middle East is Saudi Arabia sees Iran as a threat. They're going to want a nuclear weapon. Egypt and other nations in the Middle East. Now, I've read both the, the scriptures that you've read and I've read the end of the book, uh -huh. both books. So right. you believe it all comes to a head in Jerusalem. That's right. That it all is moving towards Jerusalem. Talk about that. Well, that's why I wrote the, the title is Destination Jerusalem, uh, because in so many ways, whether it's ISIS, ISIS sees part of their theology as that Jerusalem is going to be their capital of this future caliphate, this Islamic empire ruled by Sharia law. So they're on their way to Jerusalem. They, they may not get there, but that's where they're heading. Uh, and so also, and you've seen it over, over the years, the Jewish people have returned to the land of Israel. For the last 150 years or so, this has been one of the miracles of the world, the miracle of Israel being reborn. And they have such a fierce attachment to the city of Jerusalem. I mean, for, uh, when they uh, have a Passover meal, it's next year in Jerusalem. Yom Kippur, it's next year in Jerusalem. So now, so in 1967, when, when Israel recaptured Jerusalem, it was just a milestone in Jewish history. Now they have Jerusalem. And so they have such a fierce attachment to the, what they call the eternal undivided capital of the Jewish Chris, state. I, I'm so intrigued by the statement that Jesus himself, himself makes in Luke, I think it's 21, mm -hmm. chapter 21, yeah. verse 24, where he says, Jerusalem will be trodden down by the Gentiles, by the nations. That's right. If you yeah. will, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. What a word. 
Exactly. And so we're living in, a, in a, such a prophetic age, uh, you know, not only for the, for the Jewish people. And now we also see Christians around the world focused on Jerusalem like never before, praying for the peace of Jerusalem in unprecedented numbers. And, uh, you know, in Isaiah 62, 6 and 7, it says, you know, give the Lord no rest till he makes Jerusalem a praise in all the earth. And I think we're seeing that fulfilled as well. I think this is your greatest hour. Thanks for coming with us. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. On the program today. Okay. Really good to have you. If you want to understand the impact that ISIS is having in the Middle East, how prophecy is unfolding and how history's final chapters will be written in Jerusalem, be sure to get a copy of Chris's latest book, Destination Jerusalem, Eyewitness Account of Prophecies unfolding in the Middle East. But first, an important update on a tribe of Jewish people who desperately need your help. Stay with me. Your gracious gift in support of the work of Jewish Voice right now will make you a vital part of providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. Our medical teams will provide more than just physical care and comfort. They will share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their promised Messiah. Today, we urgently need your help to equip and fund this vital upcoming outreach. Time is literally running out for many of the most vulnerable there, especially infants and toddlers. You can help save them, but you must act now. Will you be a blessing to these needy Jewish people? Call or click right now to share life-saving help. And we'll say thank you by sending you the book by Jonathan's guest, Chris Mitchell, which was highlighted on today's broadcast. In Destination Jerusalem, CBN News Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell takes you to the front lines of the conflicts burning through the Middle East today, including the spread of ISIS, the ongoing isolation of Israel, and the struggle for Jerusalem. As you read, you'll learn how to prepare for what lies ahead in what may be the most challenging days of our lives. If God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $100 or more today, to help bless some of the neediest Jewish people on earth, we'll also send you our beautiful and practical Afghan throw. This specially created Afghan carries the spiritual reminder to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It will make a comforting and inspirational addition to your home. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share a gift in support of this vital outreach and request your thank you resources, please call, click, or write now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of extending life-saving medical help to some very needy Jewish people. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. Please call, write, or click right now. One Jewish community that many of you have helped us to reach out to is the Beta Israel. This is the House of Israel in Ethiopia. These Ethiopian Jews, who are the poorest of the poor, hope to one day return to Israel. But in the meantime, they're suffering in severe poverty and they're desperate for help. Jewish Voice now holds three outreaches there every year to provide medical care, dental care, eye care, eyeglasses, even eye surgeries, all completely free of charge. But most importantly, we tell them about their Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua. Here's a close look at the Beta Israel, the House of Israel in Gondar, Ethiopia. When you look outside of the clinic at the masses of humanity, thousands of people waiting to get in, it truly is about helping a multitude. But for our volunteers, it's that one life that uh, was transformed that touched their heart. This is the life of Wakaya Getty. Today, she's making the difficult journey over the hilly and dusty roads of Gondar, dodging cars, goat herds, and crowds of people. A hike that will take her an hour and a half on blistered feet. But she's heard about the clinic, and it's a once in a lifetime chance to get the medical attention she desperately needs, having endured abdominal pain brought on by complications during pregnancy. This will be the very first time she sees a physician. Dr. Lawrence is an emergency room doctor from Dallas. He wants to check her heart and lung functions to assess her overall health. Now treating her for her pain, but uh, she's gonna need to go to the GYN for continued workup. 
Dr. Fajardo from Colombia is a specialist at the clinic and was able to give her an ultrasound on site to aid in her diagnosis. It's the very first medical treatment of such she has ever received, and she is most likely unaware of the important role it plays in her health care. Hearing the good news of Yeshua, the spiritual counseling she receives is perhaps the first time she is told that while she has been abandoned, she is not forgotten or alone, that God sees her plight and is reaching out to her even this very day through these volunteers acting as the hands and his feet of Yeshua. There's so much more to do. We'd love to have you join us on one of our medical outreaches. For more information or to volunteer, you can call 800-299-9374, or you can go to www.pleaseanswerthecall.org. All one word, pleaseanswerthecall.org. Samson's tribe, the lost tribe of Dan, are the Beta Israel, or Jewish people of Ethiopia. They are a persecuted people, and those who have accepted Jesus are ostracized even further. They are outcasts, the poorest of the poor in Ethiopia, without clean water to drink, enough food or clothing, or even basic medical care. Yet they worship Yeshua joyfully, and thousands more are recognizing Jesus as their long-awaited Messiah. It's amazing, prophecy fulfilled before our very eyes. Come witness this miracle. Be an important part of God at work in these last days, gathering his people back to himself. We need volunteers urgently for this outreach. Medical professionals, prayer partners, and practical service volunteers as we minister to thousands of very needy and spiritually hungry people in just one short week. Come with us and help these desperate Jewish people say yes to being God's hands and feet. Please answer the call. Since 1967, Jewish Voice has been dedicated to proclaiming the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is Messiah and Savior to the Jew first and also to the nations. Now, one way we do this is by helping some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. We've been able to demonstrate God's love by providing these people with medical care, dental care, eye care, eye surgeries, all free of charge, but most importantly, we share the gospel. And it's because of your faithful support that we're able to make a difference in their lives. If your answer is yes, we have some very special ways of saying thank you today. I've selected some helpful